Hi everybody and welcome to the third tutorial of the Enchanted Forest Castle Reflection piece. Again just to give you an idea of what we're working to. This is the lovely piece that we're going to be replicating. Today we're going to be looking at uh, putting the water in the in this side of the moat. You can see I've prepared this. I've also done some other preparation work which I'll quickly take you through before we get started. So you'll see that I've put in these grassy banks along here and these are just very 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 simply blended as we did with these segments of the trees the colours will be written down for you in the description as always um, but just quickly it's yellow chartreuse, chartreuse, spring green, apple green, grass green and parrot green and it's a similar pattern of greens to what we've used in the past if you've done any of the other tutorials I've made this lighter on this side because I know that this background is going to be a sunset and the sunset will be brightest in this area, which is why I've made the grass highlight from this side going out over to dark here, where the sky will be a darker red at this side and at this side on the edge. I've also done the little rocks. Um, so I've done the, the stones in the background and the little pebbles in the foreground. These aren't blended, they're just straightforward block colours going from light to dark. And the, the upright rocks that you can see, I've used all of my Prismacolor warm greys. So I've just used 10, 20, 30, 50, 70 and 90% warm, uh, sorry, not warm grey, French greys, I beg your pardon, French greys. Because the French greys are a little bit um, tinted with brown. And sometimes when you're, um, a lot of the time I use um, cool greys for rocks, but I wanted to have like a little, a warmish effect, kind of like a little brown almost effect to these pebbles, which is why I've used the French greys. And then you can see for the pebbles I've done exactly the same, so there's no blending. Again, it's just block colours, but going from uh, light to dark, I've got rosy beige, clear rose and chestnut. Is that all the preparation I've done? No, it's not. Um, I've coloured in this path and I've used exactly the same French greys as I did for the stones. So just going from the 10 to the deepest 90% French greys. Just very, very simple, straightforward blending. Again, I've put the lightest at the top of the footpath because this is going to be closest to the light source of the sunset in the background. Okay, so let's get started on the reflection. So you can see I've done this side to show you what we're going to work to over on this side. And that you can see we got to the end of tutorial two and we'd put in our windows. So what we're going to do is we are going to lay down the colour of the castle onto the surface of the water. And if you remember, the first two colours that we used around the outside of these windows were 10 and 30% cool grey. So what I'm going to do is just lightly, I'm going to go around because the 10% cool grey was the first one we used outside of these windows. So I'm just going to lightly go around each of the little windows like this and I know it seems odd putting grey into the water but you want the colours that were used on the castle to reflect into the surface of the water and I apologise if you can hear snoring in the background my puppy Hope, I didn't want to disturb her from the art room today she's actually asleep by my feet um, so I'm hoping that because this video is going to be quite short she won't interrupt us but I can hear her gently snoring underneath which is quite cute okay so I'm only pressing quite lightly here and then again when we did these windows the outer grey before we got to the purple was our 30% cool grey so again just around the outside of that other lighter grey and again just quite lightly I'm just gonna make an outline and I'm being careful to avoid these blue water bubbles so again just making the circles so we can apply the colour of the castle onto the circle of the surface of the water like that so I can put my greys down now and then I'm going to take the two purples that I had from the castle colour, which is the lilac and the violet. And I'm going to start with the, the violet, which is the deeper shade first. 
because this is the bottom of the castle you can see is it is a lot darker and by the time we get up to the depth of the colour here we're, we're kind of off into the grassy bank so we only need to use this violet at the bottom of the walls. So where I've marked out you can maybe just about see the, the, the castle wall line here so just up to there and I'm only going to press quite lightly and I'm scumbling so I'm just going around in little tiny circles in a fairly light hand at the base here in the deepest violet colour to reflect the deepest shade of the purple at the bottom of the castle wall into the water beneath. And again, I know it seems weird putting purple in the water, but watch, you'll see. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my lilac colour and I'm going to scumble in all of the other bits in my castle shape around the windows and around those little bubbles so just lightly just lightly scumbling them in and we don't want to be pressing hard because otherwise in a minute when we put the blue colour over the top you won't be able to see the blue if we pressed on hard now with the purples and then put blue over the top the blue wouldn't show but because we're only doing this in a light hand, it will look, I promise, like a reflection because you'll be able to see the water over the top. And if you wanted to, I mean, you can see all of the spires and turrets. You haven't got much room to play with here before you kind of get to this grassy bank line there. So really all I'm doing is kind of taking my reflections up to about there. Okay, now what I've done is I've just gone over slightly onto that grassy bank. So I'm just going to take that off with my Tombow eraser. See, nothing can't be fixed. So this line, it's actually quite difficult to make out, but this line here is the edge of the water. And I've just gone over slightly onto that, so I've just rubbed that out. Now this is where the magic comes in. So we're going to be using um, one, two, three, four, five, six shades of blue. And they're the blues that, if you've done the um, Magic Jungle tutorial, they're the blues that we use for the sky, plus a cobalt blue. And it's the deepest cobalt blue that I'm going to start with first. And you can see that I've got my deepest colour in this corner on this side over here. And that's cobalt blue. And I just want to make a tiny highlight in this corner. So in the white, we're not going over the purple yet. Just gently. Again, I'm not pressing all that hard. Just with that deepest cobalt blue, make myself a little deep blue because it's furthest away so it would be the deepest colour and that's all I need with the cobalt blue, I can put that down. Now, the other five colours that I've got for the water are Blue Lake, uh, Caribbean Sea, Blue Slate, Cloud Blue, uh, sorry, Powder Blue and Cloud Blue is the lightest. So Cloud Blue, Powder Blue, Blue Slate, Caribbean Sea and Blue Lake going from light to dark. Again, those will be written down for you. Now, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take the deepest because we're going to start at the back and work forward. So I'm going to take my blue leg and what I'm going to do is quite gently at this point, go over in horizontal strokes, go over everything. And you can just see the blue coming out over the colour. And I'm not pressing hard. I just want a medium firm hand just in that little kind of half centimetre there and that's as much as I want to use this deepest blue so I'm going to put that down then I go to go to my next deepest blue which is Caribbean Sea and just blend round the sides of that cobalt blue and again just lightly go over everything go over the purple go over the yellow but just avoid those little glitter gel pen water bubbles that we put in earlier and again just about a half a centimeter because this this is, again is quite a deep blue color and take it right out to the side 
and up to the rocks like that. Next blue, which is blue slate. Again, just lightly, lightly, lightly. About half a centimetre, go over everything. Put a blue sheen across the top of all of the other colours you've laid down apart from that glitter gel pen. And you can start to see that it looks like a reflection already, although we're not, we're not finished at all by any means. Then we're going to take the uh, powder blue. We're going to do the same again. Only I'm going to do about a centimetre this time. So I'm going to take kind of half of what's left, half of the area that's left, and just gently, again, I'm not pressing hard at this point, just gently go over everything. in a strip like that and then I'm going to finish with my lightest blue which is my cloud blue and the area of the malt water that I've got left again just lightly at this point fill in the rest of that water in this lightest blue and if you do touch these bubbles don't worry because I'll show you what to do in a minute and I've just actually gone over that part of the railing it's so difficult to make out this design when you there's so many lines going backwards and forwards there we go there we go we've got it now I've got the pattern now So if you have gone over these little bubbles a bit and they don't look as sparkly as they once did because you've touched them with the tip of your pencil, just take your rubber, I've got my um, my mono eraser, and just gently, because it's gel pen it won't rub off, just gently, because we've only kind of lightly scumbled the pencil, just taking the rubber gently over the top of the gel pen will just bring it back to its former glory, its former sparkly glory, like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my blender pencil. And I'm going to press quite firmly and just all of these colours in the different layers that we've laid down I'm pressing quite firmly and I'm blending them all together so you can see why we didn't press hard because I want all of these colours to kind of meld into one so that you don't necessarily get a castle colour and you don't necessarily get a watercolour because you want a combination of both for that lovely reflection. And basically that's it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and just brighten up my windows a little bit. So I'm back to my, with these windows, if you remember we did them, we did the cream inside, but I'm going to use the, um, the lemon yellow that we used and just press quite firmly and over where I've marked out I'm just going to brighten them up just very slightly pressing quite firm and you don't have to be too accurate because the, the reflections in the water will be misty and murky and they won't be accurate because the water will be playing off them so you really don't have to be too geometrically accurate you can just kind of over your colours like that and then basically you can play so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and kind of just warm up this back again in this deep, deepest purple and press a little bit firmer this time and just at the bottom get that just for a little bit of depth just go back and make that 
the bottom of the castle that little bit darker in the water. And then I think the last thing I'm going to do is take my lilac and just lightly, lightly, lightly warm up this purple. So you're not going to take the blue colour off, you're just warming up the purple underneath to get that castle colour. And there we have a reflection in the water. And it's that easy. So we'll leave it there for today. Um, tomorrow I think we will probably have a look maybe at one of the griffins. It may not, may not be tomorrow, I'll give you a couple of days to catch up. But I think we'll have a look at the griffins next. Um, because there's a way I want to show you how to kind of do his, his fur to make it look realistic. And I hope you enjoyed it. And I shall speak to you soon. Again, any questions, just drop me a line. Bye, guys.